war in Yemen by Saudi Arabia and other Persian Gulf Arab countries, which is backed by the United States, has so far claimed over 5,000 lives. Aside from the loss of civilian lives, many of them women and children, there have been casualties on the side of the UAE, 45 of them, Bahrain, five of them there, and the Saudis, over 10 in one single day. In this edition of the debate, we'll discuss the recent developments, like Qatar's deployment of 1,000 troops to Yemen and why this illegal war is not getting more of an international response. Let me introduce our guest for this edition of the debate. We have Middle East expert Danny Mackey, who joins us from London. And we have political analyst Jihad Markada, who joins us from Beirut. Gentlemen, welcome, Jihad Markada. We're looking at some casualties here on the side of the Persian Gulf Arab countries, UAE 45, Saudi Arabia 10, and Bahrain 5 in one day. That's what was reported. It could be higher. Uh, and that brought, in less than 24 hours, apologies uh, and condolences uh, from the U.S. President Barack Obama. Meanwhile, over 5,000 civilian deaths. What reaction did you have when you heard the casualties on the side of the UAE, Bahrain, and of course Saudi Arabia? Okay, let's go to Danny Mackey. That question to you, Danny Mackey. Well, conspicuously, this has been a very important time for the Gulf Arab states in Yemen. This has been the biggest loss since the campaign began six months ago. We have a reported 45 uh, soldiers from the United Arab Emirates have been killed by the Houthi militants in what is their biggest military loss in the history of the United Arab Emirates. Now this is something which has really brought home the issue to these Gulf Arab countries that this is not a war which is going to be over very quickly. Uh, Yemen is very clearly a country now in ultimate despair from a humanitarian level and the more these Gulf Arab states intervene in Yemen the more the crisis will, will grow and it, it will become like an ulcer essentially to these Gulf, uh, Gulf Arab states. Now, the coalition has also stated that they want to send an extra 1,000 troops to Yemen. The majority of these will come from Qatar, Qatar, a country which is renowned for supporting al-Qaeda on a regional level in the Middle East. Now, ultimately, Yemen as a country is disintegrating on a day-to-day -day basis as Saudi Arabia-led airstrikes have been destroying the infrastructure of the country. Previously, the airstrikes were done on almost a precision basis but after these uh, after the loss of such a monumental s section of these troops from the United the Arab Emirates and Bahrain etc it was described as the most violent air raid since the entire campaign began so there has also been an element of revenge tactics employed by these Gulf Arab countries attacking schools embassies hospitals I mean these are not precision target guided missiles onto areas which only have military targets I mean we're seeing cities which are being bombed and razed to the ground in the most indiscriminate and reprehensible of, of ways and manners but in essence the United States the Western world are concerned with other theaters of war in the Middle East and they have turned a blind eye to what the Gulf Arab states are doing in Yemen because Essentially, this is the poorest Arab country in the whole Middle East, being bombed by some of the most richest countries in the entire world. Now, this is unfair, and in essence, the United Nations and the Red Cross and other humanitarian groups and NGOs have raised the issue of how the, human, the, the, the humanitarian aspect in Yemen is actually f faltering on a day-to-day -day basis and how these, the, these people are suffering to such an extent at, at the hands of this onslaught by these Gulf Arab countries. Okay, Jihad Mokare, if you have me, I'm going to repeat this question regarding the deaths uh, that have occurred on the side uh, of the UAE, Bahrain, and of course Saudi Arabia in one day, 45, uh, 5 and 10, 10 being Saudi Arabia, 5 for Bahrain. Uh, the U.S. president coming out and uh, sending his condolences. Uh, whose side is the U.S. president on in this war? No, unfortunately, we, uh, we don't have John McCarty. Okay, so Danny Mackey, let's uh, move on here. You talked about how the world is turning a blind eye. But I believe that the U.S. president uh, was staring right in the face of King Salman this past weekend. Uh, what came out of that was, uh, uh, well, uh, the Saudi Arabia saying, yes, the Iran's nuclear conclusion is good for the Middle East region. It will bring s uh, stability and security. And, of course, the $1 billion in uh, sales, military equipment, 
that was finalized uh, that's going to need still need to pass through Congress. But you would think that after that there could be some at least effort to show that there's a political movement for a resolution on this conflict. But yet the opposite has happened. Of course, the deaths also have occurred. Uh, why isn't there more of a push there from any country when it comes to solving this situation politically? Especially within the Middle East, you have this relationship of different states which, which intertwine on certain battlefields and theatres of war. Yemen is a prime example of, of different countries differing in interest over what is happening. So the United States is obviously the most powerful superpower in the world. Now, Saudi Arabia has traditionally always paid homage to the United States on issues regarding the Middle East. But it, in the Yemeni crisis as we speak, it is the other way around, it is vice versa. It is the US who are actually allowing Saudi Arabia to run riot in Yemen as leverage over other Middle Eastern matters and, and Middle Eastern conflicts which the United States wants a more moderate stance on. Now, what is happening in Yemen is essentially an invasion by Gulf Arab countries of this state which is one of the poorest countries in the Arab world in the aim of actually dis defeating a segment of its population. Now, whilst the United States should really be forcing an issue here, it is actually allowing them to do so. It is supporting them with logistical support and communication support, even satellite imagery of the position of some of these rebels in Yemen. But w Saudi Arabia is doing itself no, no favours within Yemen because it is strengthening al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula within Yemen on a day-to-day -day basis as it attacks these rebels called Ansarullah and he's also strengthening the narrative of these jihadist groups within Yemen who are actually fighting alongside ISIS and Al-Qaeda and these other groups because it is allowing them a narrative which, which, which is in, its, in the, in the favour of, of, of Saudi Arabia and its partners within Yemen. Now, what we have seen develop recently is this lack of interest by Western countries as to what is happening in Yemen because they deem Syria and Iraq more important battlefields than Yemen. But the Saudi Arabians perceive Yemen from a perspective of national security where its own security is now under threat by, by, by Yemeni forces and the latest attack on the coalition forces by the Yemeni rebels it signifies this, that these, these militants in Yemen who the Saudi Arabians claim to be terrorists and usurpers have actually been able to deal them significant defeats on the ground and this, is, this war will definitely take more than, more than a few years to solve but it is now an issue where geopolitical interest are now not aligned between regional countries and regional powers where it will act as, as a centre for a conflict on a regional level. Now Saudi Arabia has utilised the conflict in Yemen to, p to portray a message to the United States and its European counterparts that it wants a more proactive role within the Middle East. Now other countries within the region su such as Iran and others have ultimately shown a lack of interest to Saudi Arabian um, desire to dominate Yemen in such a manner. Now, this obviously opens up a Pandora's box of, of potential problems in the region, but it is clear that the West has allowed Saudi Arabia to reign and, and let loose this bombardment, this hammering of Yemen, which is unprecedented on an, on an Arab level to see such a country destroy a fellow Arab country in such a manner. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, looking at uh, the way this war is being carried out and some of the targets, for, as an example, by Saudi Arabia, orphanages, schools, hospitals, and then you have uh, some of the bombs that are being used. Most recent was what uh, Human Rights Watch came out and cited, uh, these munici cluster munition bombs, uh, the MF-25s, I believe it was called, U.S. made. Uh, it's very much reminiscent of the way Israel has bombed the Gaza Strip. It almost looks like a repeat scenario, the way that this uh, war is being carried out. Now, uh, ultimately, we're looking at what is the end game that Saudi Arabia has in this war, along with the other Persian Gulf Arab countries. Well, ultimately, there are a number of similarities, and stark similarities, in fact, between what's happening in the Gaza Strip and what is occurring in Yemen. But this is an Arab-on-Arab -Arab issue. This is one Arab nation bombing another Arab nation. Now, there is no ultimate end game in this co in this conflict in Yemen. It is ultimately now a place, a point, a hub of conflict for numerous countries, and. 
If the Saudi Arabians get what they want, it will only end in the destruction of any opposition to Saudi Arabia in Yemen. And this is historically something which, which will not happen, as we have always seen this strong resilience and anti-Saudi Arabian sentiment in parts of Yemen. And this has grown significantly of late. And Saudi Arabia now is attacking the basic infrastructure of the country. And this is creating much hatred and, and enemies within Yemen towards Saudi Arabia. And this is not a straightforward, um, symmetric war. These are guerrilla movements. This is guerrilla warfare at its most ferocious. So when Gulf Arab countries send their ground troops into Yemen, as is occurring and as has happened, casualties are more likely to increase and grow because you're, de you're dealing with, with guerrilla movements who know the territory, they know the ground, and they know their enemy's weak points. And these Gulf Arab armies have, been, have taken many years to actually be, be built up to such a sophisticated level, but the actual experience in battle is very, is very lacking. And this is something which has definitely been exposed in the Yemen war and is likely to be exposed in the future. Whereas if mm. you look at the, the armies of the Western counterparts, they've seen more action on a battle level and on a conflict level all, o all across the world. Whereas, I mean, I mean, this attack on the United Arab Emirates, which killed around 45 soldiers, is the worst defeat in its entire history from a military right. perspective. Now, now this ultimately shows you the dangers which were involved in attacking Yemen in such a manner. And the Saudi Arabians, if they are to escape this conflict unscathed, would be wise to turn to a political settlement and find a regional consensus rather than continue this military conflict in such a, in such, uh, in such a barbaric way. Right. Well, we have Joe Mokhara with us. Joe Mokhara, I'm going to go straight to the heart of the matter here regarding the loss on the UAE and uh, Bahrain and also Saudi Arabia. And the Qatari is now sending a thousand of their troops into uh, Yemen. And this is on the border of Saudi Arabia. Why is Saudi Arabia and its uh, Persian Gulf Arab countries taking this risk of going in on the ground, uh, given the fact that now you have these deaths, the l largest that uh, UAE has experienced in its history? Well, first of all, this is uh, contrary to uh, what everybody is saying <coughs> in terms of war of, uh, of uh, aggression. It is a war of liberation. It's a liberation of Yemen from uh, those Houthi rebels. It is a war of liberation made under the auspices of the United Nations Security Council. Uh, the United Nations Security Council itself has asked the Houthis to withdraw. This was done under Chapter 7. That was under Resolution 2201. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, Saudi Arabia and all the other Gulf countries are liberating Yemen from uh, those rebels, Houthi rebels, who have overthrown the government. Uh, who, this, is, uh, this is on the one hand. On the other hand, they have already succeeded partially. They have taken, they have liberated the south of Yemen already. They have uh, taken over Aden. Uh, they are moving on to Taiz. And uh, eventually, they are moving to uh, take over Sana'a. Now, uh, maybe people can think differently, but as far as United Nations are concerned, uh, I have not seen any UN Security Council resolution asking Saudi Arabia and its allies in the Gulf to stop the fighting. So, so from the point of view of the UN and from the point of view of the GCC countries, these uh, uh, countries are fighting for the liberation of Yemen, for the reestablishment of the legitimate government of Yemen, irrespective of whatever other people may say. The legitimate government is that of Ansur Adi. You can think differently, but the United Nations says so. So that's, that's it, period. Now. If you consider this as being an aggression, this is not an aggression. This is a liberation of Yemen. What if the march towards Sana'a fails? Well, so far, the march has, uh, uh, towards Taiz has uh, worked out. The liberation of Aden has taken place. The liberation of the South has taken place. And there is only Sana'a left. So uh, 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 it doesn't. Uh, People were complaining before that there were no, no troops on the ground. There were no boots on the ground from Saudi Arabia and everybody else. 
Now that there, is, there are boots on the ground and some people are being killed, of course the civil people are going to be killed. So uh, if Saudi troops, 10 of them, Bahraini troops, 5, and 45 Emiratis, and did you know what was the reaction of the head of the uh, UAE Armed Forces today on Twitter after the, after the killing of his soldiers? He said, we will continue to help our Yemeni brothers get rid of the Houthis and get rid of those rebels who are destroying their country. Okay, well, Danny Mackey, what so, if that doesn't go that way? As far as I'm way? concerned, and as far as the UN is concerned, Okay, let, let's get Danny no, Mackey No, 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 one Sorry. second. As, as, Go ahead, Danny as, as far as the UN is concerned, regardless of the legitimacy of this current Yemeni government and, and whether the previous government was ousted legitimately or not, the UN has not sanctioned the bombing of schools and hospitals and, 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 and civilian infrastructure. We're not discussing the legitimacy of what Saudi <coughs> Arabia is doing it does. It or does. We're, it does. whether they want to actually restore the official it government. Does. But we're discussing uh, over thousands of civilians who um, are being killed uh, in these airstrikes. I am and, sorry. and this is not sanctioned by the UN. The majority of NGOs civilians and human rights groups have actually war. Complain to the UN. You always They've have casualties in the war. Not I in this sorry. manner. When you see, sorry. First when of you all, see the Yemeni me. capital one, one second, bombed please. in such a manner. One, 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 one second, second. One second. You had plenty of time the U, to The UN before. has not sanctioned th this bombing of Yemen. They've allowed Saudi Arabia to send ground troops to restore this all of it. Yemen it is doesn't legitimate. advocate bombing it Yemen. It is legitimate. Okay, it like is legitimate. Go ahead, Come on, you're talking about Restoring schools, the embassies, legitimate civilian infrastructure. Yemen that is, is not legitimate. I'm sorry. You can bomb anything. That does anything. not mean bombing schools. It is not. That does not mean bombing schools. It is schools. not purposeful. People are not purposefully bombing schools. Stop it with your schools. When the UN resolution Saudi Arabia has a, has a is very sophisticated army. Okay, we're discussing I'm F sorry, can I talk? the latest Danny aircraft. Mackey, let, let, let Jod Makari talk and then we'll come to you and no. finish the program with you. Go of ahead, Jod Makari. They should. Please, thank you. I mean, the man had half an hour to speak before me. Well, go ahead, speak. Go ahead. Okay. When the UN resolution 2201 is taken under Chapter 7, it means that any country can go ahead and do whatever it takes to, be, uh, to execute the UN Security Council resolution. Now, if this means war, then it means war. Now, are you try seriously trying to tell me that uh, in a war, civilians are not killed? In a war, the Saudis are specifically targeting civilians. They are bombing. No. There is bombing all over the what place. What I'm trying to Syria. say. Every time the Syrians hmm. bomb, there are civilians. Yeah, but Syria doesn't have so, a modern so, army so, like Saudi so Arabia. They don't have laser-guided missiles. Nobody is targeting. Yeah, but you're talking about a difference in weapons. They don't have. They, 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 they have barrel bombs. They have barrel bombs. Barrel bombs are not even targeted. Yeah, but the Saudi Arabia have laser-guided missiles, so and they're still killing civilians in hospitals and schools. You can't uh, use Syria yes, as an example when Saudi Arabia is bombing purpose. Yemen to are the ground. To tell me they are targeting schools on Twitter. Yeah, but why yes, is it, so why is it Yemen uh, abhorrent? The because as long as the Houthis okay, do so not why is it go to negotiating, Mackie, I will do it also. As long as the Houthis... Danny Mackey, 30 seconds to you to end the program. As as the is this going to be a long war that we're looking at? Why it's abhorrent Danny Mackey, when you blame the Syrian government for bombing civilians. Is this going to be a prolonged war? Go ahead. Yes, it will be a prolonged war. This is not a war which is going to finish with, with, with some great victory and the Western countries supported by Saudi Arabia marching on to Sana'a. This is not of going course. to happen. This is going to be a protracted guerrilla warfare. But Russia supports and it's going Saudi to be Arabia. Asymmetric. But Russia supports Saudi Of course, Saudi it's going Arabia. to be a very long war. What are you and anyone who can't see that is clearly blind Arabia. to right, history. I've got to jump in China here. That's all the time Saudi we have for this edition Arabia. of the debate. Let me thank our guests. Middle East expert Danny Mackey spoke to us from London, political analyst Jad Mohakade. Thank you so much. He spoke to us from Beirut. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of the debate. From Mikovit Tavway and the entire team in the capital, Tehran. It's goodbye.